Kicking off the list at number 10, Noru. It's safe to say that the last few years have been a little rocky. Yeah, our plans had to shift a bit to say the least. Nuru, however, is a tiny island located in the southwestern Pacific. It didn't have to shut down during the pandemic. It didn't really see much change. It's the world's smallest island nation, and it was originally called Pleasant Island back in 1798 when Westerner John Fern first discovered it. Pleasant Island, yeah, it started out pretty pleasant, like most islands do. And then when humans got involved, it, it went to sh the island's natural resource at the time was phosphate, but overmining made the tiny island pretty much useless now. There isn't even a port, yet this island had a railway. Just a tiny island with barely anybody there and a running train. As far as cursed locations go, this one's on my travel list. If only they would just allow visitors. Maybe one day. Number nine, Randolph Mackin Women's College. Yeah, when you think of a doomsday bunker or anything hidden below the surface of the earth, you're thinking airports, right? Something massive, vaults in the middle of the Arctic maybe, some secret Bermuda Triangle, alien base, whatever. Well, look no further than Lynchburg, Virginia at Randolph College. So around World War II, just like most of these places that I'll mention on this list, a bunker was made to protect people, government officials, and sometimes art. The National Gallery of Art hid paintings in North Carolina, so another privately funded facility at Randolph College was also at the ready. It was this three bedroom hideout for the gallery's curator. Can't forget about art on this list, it's also important. Number eight, the Shanghai Complex. Most of the details of this one are still unknown, as are the other ones on this list as well. How fun is that? A mysterious Shanghai Complex, let's talk about it. It's this massive underground bunker, as you probably could have guessed, and it's supposedly able to fit 200,000 civilians comfortably. It's over 100 million square feet, and it was built in case, well, a nuclear attack were to happen. This was revealed through a newspaper article back in 2006. Imagine reading about this one morning, I'd be like, hi, what? What? The Shanghai Morning Post touched on the new complex saying that it's got massive protective doors, electricity, good lighting, good ventilation, all that good stuff, and it can fully support life for two full weeks. And yes, it's very secure. Number seven, Pine Gap. Going to the land down under for this one, here we go. Pine Gap is a secret military compound built around the Cold War, and it's been described as Australia's Area 51. Doesn't mean that there's aliens there, but you never know. All we know of this secret base on this mysterious island was revealed back in 2013, thanks to our man Edward Snowden. Yeah, he revealed quite a bit, actually. Turns out this island is not a fun resort. In fact, it's a satellite surveillance base that runs espionage operations. And it's got a lot of underground hidden bunkers. You can't even get close to this thing. The NSA is currently using this facility for global interception, and they also collect internet and telephone communication records. So your voicemail to chat is probably lying in a USB somewhere. Back in the 70s, around 400 American families moved to the nearby Alice Springs. Why? Eh, just for fun, it seems. Just for the waves. Just for surfing the web and the waves. Number six, the Greenbrier. Located in Sulphur Springs in West Virginia, this US hideout was crucial during, you guessed it, the Cold War. Just 250 miles west of the capital city, the Greenbrier Resort got a fun little expansion as it was being built back in 1958. This expansion to the resort was not another spa. There was no water parks, no splash pool, anything like that. Rather, it was a secret bunker for United States Congress. This bunker was more of an underground city, if anything. When I say bunker, it's like a little where you have to hide in. No, this had a massive cafeteria. This had a dentist's office in case you get a cavity while you're hanging out down there. The crazy thing was, obviously this information was kept under wraps as best as they could, but according to Jared M. Graff, author of Raven Rock, conferences were being held in these public spaces at this resort, but the people walking through there never realized what these actually were. They never realized the bunker's true intentions. It was a doomsday chamber all around them this whole time, and they're having resort meetings. One thing employees did notice was how many urinals were in the building, which is, to be fair, that's kind of funny. That's the first thing I would notice. Number five, Denver International Airport. Since its opening in 1995, Denver International Airport, DIA, has been the subject of many myths. I've heard about this before, this is hilarious. I think it's in Tony Hawk, probably, I don't know. Some are so bizarre, I had to include it on our list today. Yeah, lizard people, apparently they like to build airports. The more you know. So far, it's believed that the Freemasons built the airport, or the Illuminati, or the New World Order. The airport itself is massive. It covers around 52 square miles. There's literal gargoyles that are just hanging out near baggage claim. The art displayed there is a little odd, so I get it. It does seem creepy. Maybe you want to know more about it. But the airport has started to lean into this conspiracy. They're actually laughing at this stuff by now. They have a conspiracy month that began back in 2016. How fun. Imagine going to the airport and they're like, oh, it's conspiracy month. I'm like, what? What? I just want to fly Delta. What's going on? They even show a screening of Close Encounters of the Third Kind. So yeah, like I 
said, they're really leaning into this. I would have leaned into something too if I was hiding a secret bunker and if I was guilty. Just saying. Number four, Project Iceworm. Oh, here's a fun one. As a Canadian, this project sounds like the worst one on this list. So impossibly cold. It's so cold out today. I'm freezing doing this list. Back in 1960s, under the Greenland ice sheet, the US Army started to build a mobile nuclear missile launch site. The code name was Project Iceworm, which is pretty fitting under the ground and ice. You got it, I didn't have to explain it. They were close enough that they could hit targets within the Soviet Union, right? That was the entire point here. This project was called Project Iceworm, but there was another project called Camp Century that had to be completed first. You can't just show up with a bunch of shovels and be like, all right, let's attack them. No, you have to make a base first. You gotta make sure it's livable. Camp Century was a network of underground tunnels and places for workers to stay. There was a kitchen, a hall, supply rooms, communication center, all that good stuff. There was also a nuclear power plant, so things were getting pretty official. Things were well on their way, to say the least. This was kept from the Danish government for seven years, but in 1966, the project was canceled because of shifting ice. Or was it? Number three, the floating White House. This one's not an underground bunker per se, but it was once a doomsday ship. That counts. Also, it's under the water, so it can technically blow uh, Earth level. I don't know. This was back in 1962, before Air Force One. There was a presidential yacht or two. These yachts sound glamorous, but really it's just a floating doomsday bunker. Lincoln had a steamboat during the Civil War that he used, and it was called the River Queen. The USS Mayflower was used by Roosevelt. Then later on, two Navy command ships were ready in the 60s. There was a light cruiser and a light aircraft carrier, one of which was always in the water near the president, just floating by, just lurking about. This is when the Soviet Union had a weak Navy, so the odds of them finding the president's ship in the Atlantic, well, those odds were slim. That is until, of course, satellite technology became a Thing, and then we started looking down from above, and then after that, the floating presidential bunker wasn't hidden, obviously. It's probably the worst place to put a president at this point, actually. Just in the middle of the water. They're like, eh, let's play Battleship, I guess. Number two, Metro 2. How fitting, two and two, let's do it. An underground metro or an underground city. Over in Moscow, there have been many tales of this underground city hiding deep beneath Russia's capital. Once World War II ended, these underground shelters were underway. And originally they were designed to protect civilians, but they had to be done in secret. And also you needed roads to connect these bunkers. So we might as well create a second metro. We'll call it that, a second metro. It was labeled as Metro 2. The rumors, of course, are that these hidden tunnels and bunkers are still being used by the KGB. Back in 1994, this exploration group called the Diggers supposedly found the entrance to this underground KGB tunnel city. Living in Toronto, we have one underground subway station that's like kind of abandoned. Pretty sure the KGB isn't hiding there. I haven't checked though in a while, but maybe I'll take a look. I'll get my boys the Diggers and we'll go and take a look. And finally, number one, the Svalbard Vault. Over the pandemic, I spent a lot of time playing video games and stuff like that, obviously, keep my mind busy. And most of my favorite games, I realized, have a similar like doomsday, post-apocalyptic feel, like Fallout 4, I was playing it, and I'm like, this isn't really, this feels stressful. It's stressful, but quite engaging. And in real life, we have a global seed vault, and it's deep, deep in the Arctic Circle on the island Spitsbergen. It's this massive bunker that has since been deemed the Doomsday Vault. How fun. This is where humans will store food crops and it contains 100 million seeds. So if the earth all of a sudden gets wiped out or even if all the ice melts, this vault will be good to go. We won't survive, but we have seeds. All that water just flooded the rest of humanity will now regrow the earth, ideally, which sounds so horrible, but weirdly cute. I'm kind of concerned. Is there something we don't know about this vault? Is that seed guy from Breath of the Wild hanging out in there with his loud maracas? Or Santa? I mean, Santa's only 800 miles away from this area, so he could be hiding here. You never know. Kicking off the list at number 10, WikiLeaks. Companies have to be somewhere, right? We're a film studio in Toronto. We go to work, we clock in, we clock out. This is a physical place that we go to. But where do places like WikiLeaks live? You know, where are all those odd safe houses, really? Well, apparently in Stockholm, buried around 100 feet below street level as an old nuclear bunker. Today, it's a facility owned by Swedish internet provider, Banhoff. This is where they keep servers for WikiLeaks, which is pretty hilarious. Julian Assange, front runner of this whole operation, his hard drive is in this bunker behind a two foot steel door accompanied by numerous backup generators. This guy will never get bored. If Netflix ever goes down, he's good. He's got like two weeks of movies. Number nine, Bangar Fort. Back in the 16th century, King Mado built this massive Bangar Fort in India. The population of the small town was around 1,000 folks at the time. It was a beautiful fort, and he considered this a luxury. Rightfully so, I mean, it looks like a set piece from Game of Thrones. This is beautiful. The legend has it that Princess Ratnavati, who at the time was living in the luxurious fort, she was the talk of the town. Dudes were proposing left, right, and center. Princes of all over the 
the world would come in and try and take her hand. But she was like, eh, maybe, eh, no, I don't know. And then one day when visiting town, a magician named Skindia saw the princess shopping for perfumes. So he asked her out, she said no, and he was like, okay, what's step two here? What's plan B? So he then used black magic of Ashikaran on the princess. Yeah, he, he mixed it with the perfume she was admiring, but it didn't work. Luckily, she caught on, she smashed the perfume, and as the bottle broke apart, the magician cursed the entire fort and those living inside of it. And then, only a few days later, an entire war erupted around the fort, and there were tons of casualties. Yeah, let's avoid this area forever, shall we? Cool, great, moving on. Number eight, Kalua Papa. Heading over to the beautiful Hawaii for this one. I always wanted to go. Thing is, islands in the middle of nowhere freak me out. And also, haunted villages, they, they freak me out as well, just a little bit, we don't like those. Once referred to as the most cursed place on Earth, the coast of Molokai sounds like a great time. And from Google Earth, it certainly looks like a fair weekend getaway. But for over 100 years, this was an isolation coast for patients with leprosy. Yeah, not, a, not an ideal paradise. Nothing like paradise there, not at all. Not a, nothing like sandals, we're not gonna bowl the sandals on this one, I don't think. That of course had to change at some point, and the laws did in 1969. So as of right now, no more than five people are allowed to live on this island due to its cursed and horrible history. So you have to get on a waiting list for this one. Number seven, the Whaley House. Located in San Diego and built in 1857, the Whaley House is an example of why you don't build your house on cursed land. Yep, here's why you don't do it, guys. The site that this family home was built on was also once the location of San Diego's first public gallows. Yeah, what a fun fact that is. Imagine selling a home and being like, oh, did you know, by the way? Yeah, no, I don't wanna know, thank you. And apparently right after building this home and then moving in, Thomas Whaley said he could hear the footsteps of Yankee Jim Robinson, who had previously lost his life in the same gallows only four years prior. After the family had settled, they had all began to experience a bunch of family tragedies, most of which happened inside this house. Hence the cursed land aspect. As of today, the Whaley House is now a museum and apparently the family members continue to haunt the site. So sadly and thankfully, you can't live there anymore. They made a museum to make sure nobody ever stays the night. No guards either. They're like, nope, just everyone, everyone leave at night. That's good. These paranormal occurrences are often accompanied by the smells of cigar smoke and heavy perfumes. So that's a sign of demons. Either that or it's the old couple behind you the entire tour that keeps talking. They're like, ah, what did she say? <sighs> Grandpa breath on the back of your neck, get out of here. Number six, the Forbidden City. Yeah, of course we have to mention this beauty. Forbidden City? Kinda hits the mark. Located in Beijing, China, the Forbidden City has quite the reputation. That of a pretty horrible one too. This building used to be the Imperial Palace, but now it's a museum, and of course, like other places on this list, it's littered with tourists, whenever it can be. They're like, oh, we can't go here, it's haunted? No problem, let's just all gather at the same time. They can't stop us all. This building has quite the grim history, so the amount of reports that come in, sightings of demon, there's, there's a handful online, honestly. The number of ghostly encounters shot up once the palace opened to the public in 1940s. And in many cases, visitors would report seeing a ghostly woman dressed in, you guessed it, all white. The classic all white ghost look. Like, can't they just wear jeans like a turtleneck? You know, mix it up a bit. Don't you have a wardrobe up there? More often than not, you can find her ghost wandering the palace at night, weeping. Yeah, those who are brave enough to wander at night say they can hear a woman crying, just from all around. I can't tell if I'm sad or more scared now at this point. Bit of both. Number five, Hoi Baki Forest. Heading over to Romania, some UFO action on this one, believe it or not. Yeah, back in 1968, a unidentified hovering craft was spotted over this forest. Many locals at the time looked at it as a getaway to another dimension, which is a pretty strange thing to say when seeing something in the sky. A lot of folks disappeared, like they just went into the forest, looked at it, and then they were gone. Locals referred to this legendary forest as the Bermuda Triangle of Transylvania. Again, not a bad nickname. Perhaps the scariest place I can think of. Yeah, a haunted forest in Transylvania that's kind of like the Bermuda Triangle with sleepy hollow trees. I'm all set, I'm good. You lost me at Transylvanian Forest, to be honest with you. Number four, Anjakuni Village. Heading over to Canada for this one. Huh, uh-oh. Anjakuni Village is located in Nunavut. This curse began around in the 1930s. It was a cold winter's night, as most of them are in Canada. The moon was completely full and Joe LaBelle, a fur trapper at the time, was traveling to the most northern region expecting to meet up with company. Only when he arrived to the village, he found it completely empty. Despite every hut being filled with supplies, clothes, pots of food, etc. Everything. Perhaps one of the most jarring details of this winter excursion was the graves of those who had passed before in the village. Those graves were opened up. All of them. Meaning whoever or whatever came by most likely set into motion a cursed village. Great, thanks. That's... 
This sounds horrible. I like people do this in Egypt now. We're like, stop, stop opening these tombs, please. There's pandemics. Like clearly, there's something afoot. I don't know who or what wanted to open those tombs, but you need to read a book, my friend, or a map. Clearly, number three, the devil sinkhole. A sinkhole. Cursed. Why, of course. What else is a sinkhole? Obviously, it's cursed. This one's located in Rock Springs, Texas, and it's 50 feet wide and 400 feet deep. A lot of people claim this is the entrance to the underworld. And it certainly looks the part, doesn't it? The Devil's Sinkhole was first discovered way back in 1876, and it wasn't empty, which is pretty scary, considering it's a new, brand new hole into the earth. Findings of arrowheads, bones, and burnt rocks suggest at one point in time this was probably an ancient burial ground or an ancient palace of sacrifice. Either way, let's go home. Let's back it up. Oh, cool. Chris, if you found a bone in a hole in your backyard, would you just move? Yeah. 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 Exhale, and then yeah. Not even like a maybe. Confidently, yes. A place called the Devil's Sinkhole is of course now a tourist attraction. People just sneak in and try and see what's down there, but more so because of the amount of bats inside that will just flock out. Locals will often gather some evenings to observe millions of bats pour out of the sinkhole to, you know, hunt for food. So unless Bruce Wayne is down there, I'm betting on this being the devil's doorway. For sure cursed. Let's move on. Number two, Huska Castle. According to folklore, the Huska Castle, which is located north of Prague in Czech Republic, is built over a bottomless hole that leads directly down to hell. The legend claims that the 13th century King Ottokar II offered a pardon, a pardon, to any prisoner who agreed to be lowered into this pit in order to see what was down there. Sure, I would do it. I'm not gonna lie, I'd probably do it. Woo! The first prisoner who was lowered into the pit, he only lasted 30 seconds before he started screaming. Legend has it, as soon as he was brought back up, his hair had turned white and he had aged 30 years. Yeah, some Avengers Endgame science right there. We need to go back to this pit and figure something out. He was also telling stories of these half-human creatures that flew around in the darkness with scaly wings. So, sounds like somebody we know, I think, on this list. I don't know. The castle was built over the hole without things like water sources or any kitchens or anything like that because apparently it wasn't meant to be used by humans, but rather as a place to capture the demons should they rise from this mysterious devil hole. Nice. I'm glad we got some real estate on standby for these guys. Can't leave the demons out of the real estate market. We're good. We're inclusive. Just a bunch of demons are like, oh, it's good. It's good spacing. Uh, how many bathrooms? Just floating around. Three bathrooms, I think that's good. That's good for a family, that's good. It's good for four. And finally, number one, Raynham Hall. Norfolk, England. I've been to England a couple times now and I gotta say, one of the most beautiful places that I've ever been to. I would love to live there if I could. Just, you know, not here specifically. Just not around Raynham Hall. So we don't like cursed halls. The Lady of Raynham Hall became a popular tale back in 1936 after this photo was published in the papers. Legend has it, it's the ghost of one Dorothy Townshend. She was the sister of Robert Walpole, who was the first prime minister back in 1676. Some history for you. Some reports say the image is a result of a long exposure gone wrong, but it's so long ago, this is the most compelling thing we have really to the paranormal. More than likely, it's long exposure gone wrong, but either way, I wanted to finish off on a cursed place with an actual photo, you know, I like to include real photos for you guys. This is one of, if not the most debated photo of a spirit of all time. The first sighting was Christmas Day, 1835, so make sure you're not on the naughty list if you live around here. He's checking twice, apparently, that big old guy. Kicking off our list here at number 10, we have Mount Weather. Not to be confused with Mount Chiliad, although that one's quite mysterious as well. We'll save that for another video. Mount Weather in Virginia is an emergency operations center. It's the go-to spot in case of any national emergency. These are for the higher, higher ups, you know what I mean? Like in the movie 2012, they would have went here. The facility is around 560 acres, and it's also used as the command center for the federal emergency alert system. So if there were ever a day where the president needed to announce anything massive, this is where he'd go to do so. It's about an hour away from Washington DC, and after the 2001 September attacks, the news reported that these high-level leaders of Congress were taken just 75 miles west of Washington. There was a literal traffic jam of government vehicles going that direction. Also from above, Mount Weather looks like it's hiding military style support housing. These notches in the side of the hill are peculiar, to say the least. And that's just the beginning of our list here. Number nine, King Tut's artifacts. The new Grand Egyptian Museum opened up in 2021, and while that's quite recent, the contents displayed inside certainly are not. For the first time in history, King Tut's ancient belongings, the artifacts discovered with him initially, will all be on display. Yeah, this is huge. Prior to this museum being open, we only saw around 150 artifacts from his tomb in entirety. They took all these pieces on tour, but now this museum will house thousands of artifacts. It's the final resting place for King Tut's collection. That's over 
over 7,000 square meters of just Egyptian history all on display for you. It's pretty amazing. If you have a chance to visit the Grand Egyptian Museum or if you saw this King Tut world tour live, Nice, I'm jealous, I'm really jealous. Number eight, North Sentinel Island. Heading over to India, this island is the home of the Sentinelese tribe, one of the most forbidden islands in the world. But why, really, why? It's located in the Bay of Bengal. North Sentinel Island is about 1,200 kilometers away from India. And while most islands are shrinking or disappearing, this one actually grew back in 2004. Yeah, the island actually lifted up a couple of meters during an earthquake, so it's getting bigger. Gain an extra kilometer, nice. The inhabitants on this island are among the few uncontacted tribes left in the world. They've apparently been there for 50,000 years. There's no sign of agriculture or even fire yet, but somehow this tribe has thrived for this long. If we try and get close, they will try and drive anybody away with deadly force. In fact, back in 2006, two fishermen lost their lives because they got too close to the island without knowing who was on it. We don't even know how many people are on this island to this day. We have zero clue. They aren't exactly these ruthless hunters per se, they're just protecting their land, like they've done so for thousands of years. They're protecting this island from us, pretty much, and they'll continue to do so. Yeah, we're not getting close anytime soon. Number seven, Lascaux Cave. If you didn't visit this cave back in, say, 1963 or sooner, you lost your chance, my friend. Forever, yeah, officially closed. The Lascaux cave system is now a World Heritage Site in France. These cave paintings are 17,300 years old. Paintings that depict cattle, bison, stags, you name it. They're beautiful, they're complex, and of course, they're extremely old. So old that the cave was closed to the public forever in 1963 after it declared human presence wasn't too healthy for its art, yeah. Our breathing would eventually cause this art to fade away. Plus, I'm sure somebody would have snuck in by now with a Sharpie had it remained open. 17,000 year old paintings, protect these for another 17,000, please. Number six, Surtsey Island. When it comes to new things in life, it's pretty rare we get a new island. Yeah, how lucky are we? We're even luckier that Disney didn't build a resort here. Nice, because now scientists get to study what an island looks like without human interaction for a change. Yeah, oh, we're nervous now, eh? We're like, oh, what's gonna happen with it? Is it nice? Is, it, is the air better? Surtsey Island on Iceland. As of right now, it's only open to a few scientists and geologists. Everybody else, beat it, pal, get lost. It was born from a volcanic eruption back in 1963, coincidence, at the same year that the caves closed. And scientists all have one rule on this island. No seeds, nothing. Choose something else, anything else, please. One guy accidentally pooped out a tomato seed and almost lost his job. The guy almost ruined the whole operation because he ate a tomato. What a stressful job. Better hold it, I guess, if you work there. Number five, Niha Island. Located in Hawaii, this beautiful island is also not a sandals resort, yet. Nice, that's, a, that's good stuff, what do you know? In fact, the population of this island is only a whopping 170. It's also referred to as the Forbidden Island. It was bought back in 1864 by Elizabeth Sinclair, and it's been privately owned since, hence the small population. The thing is, in 1952, the polio epidemic hit the islands and a ban was put in place. So now you couldn't enter the island or leave. Yep, better pack your nicest flip-flops, buddy. You're staying. Nobody got sick, which is a good thing, but now if you want to enter the island or whatever, you have to gain special access, which is a lot harder than it may seem. Even if you're extremely rich, you can't just buy your way onto this island. There's something going on there. For now, we'll just, you know, observe from a bush from afar. We'll just sit there with a telescope and have FOMO. Number four, the Shanghai Complex. Most of the details on this one are still unknown. How fun is that? Nice. We love a nice mystery here on Top 10. The Shanghai Complex is a massive underground bunker, as you could have guessed. It's supposedly able to fit 200,000 civilians comfortably. Yeah, it's over 1 million square feet, and it was built in case a nuclear attack were to ever happen. Probably, probably a great call. Probably some good stuff. This was a newspaper article back in 2006. Now imagine reading about this one morning while you're having your coffee, just all of a sudden an underground bunker. You're like, do we get tickets? How does this work? The Shanghai Morning Post touched on the new complex saying, it's got massive protective doors, everything you need, electricity, great ventilation. It can fully support life for two weeks. And yes, it's very secure. No one's getting in or out. Number three, Svalbard Vault. Over the pandemic, I spent a lot of time playing video games. And a lot of these games always have a similar theme, I realized. Always like a post-apocalyptic, a lot of survivors and vaults. I'm referring to Fallout, that was definitely my go-to game. It's stressful but engaging, and in real life we have a global seed vault, and it's deep in the Arctic Circle, on the island Spitsbergen. It's this massive bunker that has since been deemed the Doomsday Vault. That's nice, that has a, has a nice ring to it, sounds calming. This is where humans will store food crops like all of them. It contains 100 million seeds, so if the Earth all of a sudden were to get wiped out by White Walkers or all 
all the ice melts, something bad happens and we're all doomed, well, this vault will be good to go long term. All that water that has since, you know, eliminated humanity, plenty of hydration for future crops. April showers, I guess. Number two, Denver International Airport. Since its opening in 1995, Denver International has been the subject of many myths. Some are pretty bizarre. I had to include it on our list today. Lizard people, that's the talk of the town. Apparently, they like to build airports on their off time, whether or not, you know, ruling the Illuminati. Yeah, so far it's believed the Freemasons built this airport or the Illuminati or lizards, the New World Order, something, someone, I don't know, it's haunting. The airport itself is massive. It covers around 52 square miles. There's gargoyles that are hanging out in your baggage claim. So yeah, the art displayed is odd, that I get. It does seem creepy for sure. But the airport has started to lean into it almost. They laugh at this stuff. They have a conspiracy month that began back in 2016. So they're like, yeah, yeah, screw it. Whatever you're saying, sure. They even showed a screening of close encounters of the third kind at the airport. What, imagine you're traveling and this happens. I'd be like, what, where am I? What year did I land in? I would lean into it too. Honestly, if I was hiding a secret bunker, the only thing I would do is lean into it. You know, kind of like number one, Area 51. Of course we have to talk about it. What is, is it real? Are there aliens? They're on the news. Is this a real place? Remember that Area 51 raid when everybody was determined to find out the truth about aliens? That big raid, you know, that massive raid with everybody? Everyone! We're not here for photos! We're here to rescue the aliens! Rescue. Okay, so it didn't it didn't work out thing. I don't think I don't think we got in. We didn't raid Area 51, obviously. I mean, I don't know. A handful of gamers in tinfoil hats can't overthrow Area 51 military. Who to thunk? Because it's one of the most forbidden places in the world to enter. That's why. It's common knowledge at this point, but why exactly did people get arrested in tinfoil hats? What were they hiding? What did they want to break into? We don't know, but we're trying weirdly. I don't know. Reddit wants to find out. Mm -hmm. 